न च देवयक्ष न ब्राह्मण क्षत्रिय वैश्य शूद्र न ब्रह्मचारी न गृही वनस्तवा भिक्षु न च अहम निज बोध स्वरूप I am what I am. That bodha, that knowledge. Now, when uh, Dr. Bakhane, when he was introducing, he was very correct to learn from the character. When we are learning from these great characters, Mahabharata, we have studied. But most of the incidents that is happening, that is happening because of the some characters, some people. Why these people are behaving like this? Who are these people? So that is very, very interesting. And today, we will try to study the Dronacharya, then Kripacharya. So the moment we say Drona Acharya and Kripa Acharya, they are teachers. Acharya means teacher. And very interestingly, they are teaching martial arts and military arts and very high order of military arts. But both of them are Brahmanas. And they are teaching the Kshatriyas. So in the beginning itself, their character, and then both the Acharyas, they were related. And both the Acharyas' parents were very famous sages. Like the Dronacharya, he is a very interesting and important personality. And his father was Bharadwaja Muni. We know the Bharadwaja Gatra. That is the Bharadwaja Muni. His father was Bharadwaja. His mother was an Apshara, Gritachi. So the mothers, the Apsharas, they are also not ordinary women. They are also having great qualities. So they are Apsharas. At the same time, they are having a lot of qualities. But at the same time, they never married and settled down. So that was their character. But this Rishi, he had that son. And this son, he became this Dronacharya. Drona. This Drona, he was taught by his father himself. His father taught him scripture. This is very important because he was a minister. He was a the Rishi, so obviously he taught him the scripture and at the same time, and he taught him in military arts, advanced military arts. So that is the reason afterwards we will find that it is so difficult to defeat Drona. Then ultimately Yudhishthira came and told how to kill you. Then Drona told, you cannot kill me as long as I am holding the bow and arrow or any arm. So you have to do something by which I will give up all those things. Then only you can kill me. So that was the complete planning also he said. Because within his mind always there was a Rishi. He was a Rishi Putra. So his mind was always a Rishi. At the same time something happened in his life just to take the revenge he changed the course of his life. So we know that his another teacher was Agnibesha. This Agnibesh, he was also a very famous Rishi at the same time, a very good teacher in our, uh, military arts. Now the question is in those days, we also find that the Ramayana, the Ramachandra learned all those things, the military arts from a Rishi. Vishamitra. And these people also they are learning the Mahabharata, all the Kshatriyas princes and the Pandava princes, they are, they are learning this thing from the Brahmanas. And they were so good in it. 
His father was the Varadwaja, he was a great Rishi, but he taught him the military art. That means in that culture, at that time, they knew all these things. But at the same time, they chose a profession, the profession of a Rishi. And when they were Rishis, mostly they were free from the family bondages. And some of them, they were there. Gautama, they were. And at the same time, if we see the Kripacharya, the Kripa, his father was also a Rishi, and his name was Shardan. The Shardans was his father. Grandfather was Gautama Rishi. We don't know much about the Shardan, but we know about the Gautama. He was a very famous Rishi, the Gautama Mani. And this Gautama's grandson is Kripa. And similarly, Kripa was well versed in the scripture. And at the same time, he learned the military arts also. Kripa was also a great warrior, but though not like the Drona. The Kripa also used to teach the, uh, this, our uh, Kauravas princes. Drona came and with the help of this Kripa, he got the job in this family. This Drona married Kripa's sister. So see, that is the reason the twin brother and daughter and sister, they were born of the Shardan. And just like that, they left them. Here the Bharadvaj Muni, he didn't leave the uh, Dronacharya. He supported him to grow up, though the mother was not there. And he, Kripa also, the mother left and the father, he helped, him, never attended that. He left them on over there, went away. Luckily, the very famous king, Shantanu, he came into that and he found them and picked up this brother and sister and gave this name Kripa and Kripi. So both of them, they grew up over there. Then afterwards, this, uh, the sister was married to this Dronacharya. And this Kripa also grew up in the same way like the Dronacharya. But Dronacharya life, he became the student of the Agnivesha and he learned the mastery over, uh, completed the mastery over the military arts. That means he could control the a type of the weapon which could produce fire to burn thousands. That was the tremendous type of the uh, things that only a few people they could understand and they could use. Unless and until you have the control over your mind, you are not supposed to use. Even present, present day, the people are very much worried about those who are having uh, this type of weapon without any control. I am not naming the countries, but the world, the leaders, they are worried and constantly watching if this type of countries and this type of people, they have this type of weapon, it will be dangerous. And that is the reason they always control. In those days also, similar type of something was there. I do not know. But they said that, that used to produce the fire. Here also we know. And tremendous power to destroy thousands of people then Dronacharya was having that power, not the Kripa. Dronacharya learned it from Agni Besha. And afterwards, he became very good friend. And in the school of the Agni Besha, he developed the friendship with the Drupada, the son of Panchala king, that his name was Prishata. The Prishata, the Panchala king, his kingdom was right from Gangotri down to Chambal River. So in the, the Madhya Pradesh, the Chambal, that river. So from Gangotri to Adiyud was a very big kingdom. And obviously, his son and this Drupada, they big. Their fathers also, the Varadwaja and Drupada's father, 
uh, they were also very good friends. So they also developed the friendship and this created the problem afterwards. So Droni was married to Ashtra, this uh, our Drona. They had a son. His name was Droni, sorry. Droni was the son of the Drona. Another famous name is Ashwatthama. Ah, Ashwatthama and Droni are same. Droni is unknown name, but Droni was the name, son of Drona. Now they say, though he was the Drona, he learned this military art, but naturally as a Brahmana, he started his life, his family was poor and not much of things to other people nearby, they used to have the very good livelihood, they were poor. His son saw that other children are drinking milk. He came and requested his mother to give milk. Mother could not give. And somehow some you know, the dust of the rice, she put it in the water and gave it to him. It was like a wh white uh, drink. So he was very happy, the child not knowing what he is actually drinking, he also went and showed his friends that I am drinking milk. Very simple thing, but that created problem. His mother started crying, the creepy, the creeper's sister, creepy, his, she started crying. And when the drona came, um, he came back, he told, you told that you have a very good friend and now he is the king and he promised that when he will become king, he will give you half of his kingdom. You were so close friends. Why don't you go and get some favor from him? If not the half of the kingdom, at least something. So with great confidence he went. Because the friend and he made a mistake. What is that mistake? He called him as a friend in the court when everybody was sitting. He is a poor Brahmin. And from the gate itself, he called him as a friend and the king was sitting over there. He refused to acknowledge him as his friend. And he told, go away from here. You are a beggar, you want some favor? Okay, I can give that. But don't call me and don't think me as your friend. So that created the problem. Then come that Krodha. So whole life of Drona we see that is because of the krodha, the anger, the insult. Though he was a brahmana, but he could not control that krodha, that anger. As we are learning from the characters, we learn from here that in this character, because of the krodha, because of the anger, he could wait and think. It's true that he is now king. I am not supposed to call him in that way. I can wait and when he has come down from the throne, then I can personally go, individually can meet and then I can slowly say, do you remember me, etc, etc. Otherwise, it is really very difficult. Very, very few people can recognize in that way. Swami Vivekananda, when they were giving him that wish and all people in, in that uh, Himalaya region, he was saved by a very poor Muslim. Vivekananda fainted on the way and that Muslim, he gave him the cucumber. It was containing little water and also the food. So with that cucumber, he saved the life of Vivekananda. He didn't forget. So when afterwards he became the famous Vivekananda after returning from the West, when he was traveling all over the length and breadth of India, in in the Himalaya also, Almora, that is the, that place, they were giving him great you know, honor. When he was sitting on the dais, he saw that same Muslim in a corner standing and looking at him, immediately recognized that that is the person who saved his life. He came down, Vivekananda came down and then holding his hand, took him on the dais and said, now you are welcoming Vivekananda in this way. But if this man was not there in that day, no Vivekananda would have remained because he saved my life. This gratefulness is completely different type of, that is called Brahmana attitude. 
though he was a brahmana drona he could not develop that very moment that attitude not only that all through his life only because of this he was going on within the heart then he didn't return he started searching for a job and then he went to this kingdom and he met his in law that is kripacharya kripacharya was appointed as a teacher over there as a giving the training of the military art he was not as a brahmana he joined in that way drona went stayed over there talked with him then another thing happened he showed him wonderful at the fit we can say in the archery the boys were playing with uh, the ball it fell in a dry well and one after another uh, he fixed in such a way the arrows and brought it up the, the story goes like that bhishma immediately recognized this is a great person and he will be able to help me and bhishma said not from the country but from my own personal effort i am appointing you because already kripacharya was there so if he is appointed like that kripacharya will think that oh he is taking my job so vishma told no kripa will be there as it is as a trainer you will be a separate one i will pay you so afterwards when we find that the duryodhana when he is criticizing every time he used to criticize in this way you are a brahmana and killing people <laughs> and he used to kill people he used to fight only because of the duryodhana but duryodhana he used to say you are not fighting properly though i pay you you are not working properly though i pay you that is the insult to a brahmana i am you are my employee that is the most insulting thing if you look at the greatest brahmana in the modern age bhagwan sri ram krishna he told i like to go and do the worship no problem i love to do that but i will never accept anything in return in bengali he said chal kala badha vidya shikbana i don't like to learn that thing by which one earn the giving the that uh, worshiping and all other things is the brahmana karma in return i don't like to take anything if the people out of their own respect give me it is okay otherwise i am not going to take it as a salary if the brahmo the moment a brahmana is accepting the salary he is no more brahmana so that's why again and again duryodhana insulted the drona karna also insulted him in the one place we find that duryodhana was taking the accounts i suppose we fight with the the arjuna as and others at duryodhana he was almost equal he used to think himself that i am equal with bhima i can fight with him but arjuna was far far better so naturally it was impossible to fight with arjuna so duryodhana he was thinking suppose we fight with arjuna so how many days he will take he was asking the bhishma Then Bhishma said, "This day, that day, that day, like this." He was going on. Karna said, "In five days, I will do." The Karna that arrogance. Then this Dronacharya said, "You cannot." Kripa Charya said, "I will take two months. If I have to fight with Arjuna, it will take two months. It is a, it will be very very difficult to fight with Arjuna." So all these incidents. are there in the mahabharata in different places and in drona we find this the constantly he is going on advising the dhritarashtra and also the duryodhana do not do like this he loved arjuna much better than his son droni or dashatrona but at the same time we see over here he used to send arjuna to bring fetch water from the distant river he he told arjuna you better go and fetch the water when arjuna is away he used to teach special type of training to his own son arjuna understood it arjuna said when i am away he 
he is teaching something special to his son. So Arjuna started the bringing the water in a totally different way. And the moment they used to give the, the water bucket or something, immediately Arjuna used to fill it and bring it. So how that, then he understood Arjuna is not an ordinary person. He's so eager to learn and he knew so many tricks only to get this. He didn't say, com complain to the teacher, why you are teaching to your son, especially, and not to me. As a student, bo all are your children. So that is the acceptance you must have to. And here it says, then Arjuna wanted to learn to fight in the dark, in the night itself. And he told, no, you won't be able to fight. So he said, always give food. When people are eating food in the night, you must keep the light on so that they will never learn how to handle things in the darkness. He was not very eager to teach Arjuna everything. But when they, when they were eating, suddenly, some, maybe because of the wind and all, and that light went off, Arjuna, everybody was waiting for the light to come back. Arjuna finished his food. He knew what is where and he ate the whole thing. Then afterwards he was sitting when the light came, they saw the plate is complete, Arjuna is complete. Then he understood that Arjuna will be able to learn this. He taught that too. Slowly, slowly he started loving Arjuna much than the, his own son, Ashwatthama. But he taught Ashwatthama the same fire arm to Arjuna and also to Ashwatthama. He should not have given. This was Maharaj in Chakravi. Pardon? This was Chakravi that he was teaching. Chakravi. Chakravi afterwards, mm. here in the dark, when he was, uh, how to fight in the dark, darkness, uh, how to shoot arrows and all, that he taught. Not only that, that uh, Brahmastra, as they called it, the Brahmastra was only two they knew, one is Ashwatthama, another is Arjuna. So he should not have given it to Ashwatthama because Ashwatthama was not that capable person to control his anger and all. Arjuna was having. Now our president of America, as I know, he is having that key. And he can straightway go and use that. And suppose um, he loses his temper and he never bothers about others, he just go and do that, then what will happen to the world? So obviously that type of almost like that, they knew, only these two they knew. So there's, then when Arjuna was telling that, you are not properly teaching me, but I like to learn everything to pacify Arjuna, he said, tad samo bhavita loke sattame tad bhaviti me. So I am telling you in the Adi Parva, he said, that there will be no one equal to you. That type of training I will give to you. The samo, the equal to you, tat samo, bhavita loke, in, in, the, in the world, there was no, there will be no one equal to you. Sattame tat, I am telling you the truth. Bravi me te, I am giving you the words that I will teach you in that way. Now, again we find another weakness. He, he was weak for his son. Another, because he, he died because of his son only. Because of that weakness. And again at the same time we find because of his weakness for his student, to keep the word, keep the promise, he did a very wrong thing. And that was Ekalabhya. Ekalabhya's father was a, a great warrior. And he was the main commander of uh, this Jayadratha. That is in the um, Jayadratha. So, but they belong to a low caste. So obviously, Ekalabhya came, he wanted, he was a, obviously, his father was a great pers personality also. So he came, uh, today only I was hearing the parents, they are discussing that that is a good school, we have to send our son over there, if necessary, we have to purchase a, uh, the building over there or a house over there so that we can show that our address is in that, in this country there's the system, 
you cannot simply go from here to that county and all these things. Why? Good school. And similarly, the people who wanted to learn the military arts, they wanted to come and learn it from him. One was very famous, Parashurama. Another was the Dronacharya. Since Dronacharya, Parashurama, he promised, I will never teach if you are not a Brahmana. Dronacharya said, if you are not a Kshatriya, I cannot teach you. So Dronacharya told that to Ekalavya. That was very wrong. First thing. Second, when Arjuna went for, for all of them, they went to the jungle, they found that one the dog, his whole face is covered in such a way, nothing, no harm, he is not feeling the pain, but he cannot bark. In such a way, someone has used the arrows. Can you imagine? That must be, they were putting the arrow in such a way, he cannot bark. Arjuna inquired, he found the Ekalabhya when he asked, where from you learned it? And he said, from Dronacharya. Mm -hmm. Then he came to Dronacharya, Dronacharya refused, but he started learning it out of himself with a great respect for the Acharya. So he made that image of Dronacharya and then in front of him he was doing. Very simple person, of course, and very capable. Dronacharya, when the Arjuna came and complained and he was not understanding that Dronacharya didn't do anything, it was his own effort. He learnt it. Swami Vivekananda said, all education is within you. Only you have to take it out. No one can. Only the teachers and all others guiding you from distance. Even the inspiration of a teacher, that also can give us so much of learning. Dronacharya is the proof of that. He never took any help from anyone, but he learnt it from his own strength. Arjuna came and complained, you promised that you will make me the first one, but what is this? I saw that man in the jungle, you have taught him secretly. Then he said, no, I didn't do. To promise that, he did a very heinous job. Even the Brahmana, he should not have done that. So one man, he is having so many good qualities at the same time because of one or two little bit of bad things, he cannot be considered as a what is called respected person. So that respect he lost by doing this. He went and he saw, we all know that he told, do you think that I am your guru? Yes, and what is the guru? And if I am your guru, the preceptor, you have to give me some uh, guru pranami. And what is that? Then you give your finger. Finger means a thumb so that he cannot hold the properly. So that way in right hand thumb he took and by that way he could not fight with. Of course, some of the writers, they are giving the, uh, the, this way. See, he was working for the favor of the the Kurus. And in that time, the Kuru and Pandavas, they were together. So he was accepting money from the Kurus. So naturally, he wanted to protect the Kuru family. After seeing that Ekalabhya, that is so powerful person, and it will be very difficult when he goes back and join in his father's army in Jayadratha, and Jayadratha is a complete enemy to these people, then it will be terrible. Calculating in that way, he took that step, perhaps. But whatever, it, it cannot be accepted pop, <laughs> that he should, as a guru, should do in such a thing that will completely ruin the life of the story. That he should not have done that. So this is, uh, he was going on at giving this type of training and he was going then slowly, slowly, every time, whenever there was an opportunity, he was going on giving very good teachings to both. This Dhritarashtra, just like Kripacharya and both of them, they were guiding them in a proper way. Both of them, though Brahmana, they were insulted again and again by the Duryodhana and particularly Karna. Karna used to boast all the time and Karna and the Kripa, they had a long fight. 
the conversation, 64 verses. Then ultimately, Karna told, if you don't stop and argue with me like this, I will cut your tongue, he said to Kripa. Kripa didn't say anything. So when we think about the Karna, most of the drama, we see their favor Karna, oh, he was not. But Karna had very bad uh, temper. And his behavior with the seniors were really not appre appreciable. So many times Karna did many mistakes. When a man suffer, there must a cause is there. We, we are from the distance we see and we feel sympathy, but his suffering means if you go and see, uh, that is why we are studying the characters of the Mahabharata. And we find in the Dronacharya also like this. And afterwards, when things are coming up, then they came again and again, Vyasa and all others, they are also appearing. Arjuna saved Dronacharya from the mouth of the crocodile. That was something happened. Arjuna defeated Dronacharya when they, three of them, Dronacharya, Kriparacharya, and Bhishma, along with all others, the, the Karna and all, all they went to take that uh, Virata, the cows, alone Arjuna defeated all of them. So can you imagine the power? They, both of them, they were the teachers of Arjuna. And Bhishma, unparalleled, even then, when someone is fighting for the right cause, with the right spirit, no one can fail. That time Krishna was not there. You have to remember, in the Mahabharata, all most credit goes to Krishna, as because of the Krishna Arjuna was successful. But when we see that uh, war, there it was not. Krishna was not there. At the same time, when we will discuss the Arjuna character, we will find that so many times he helped these people. He helped him and he blessed that one day will come when you will defeat me. After the death of, not death, fall of the Vishma, then the Duryodhana said, now you are our leader, you must do. At the same time, he said, you have a great love for Arjuna, I know. So I doubt that whether you will properly fight or not. I will I will ask you to do one favor to me. The, not favor, I think I'm using the word favor. He said, you should do perhaps in that way. He said, I am asking you to do one thing. What is that? Do not kill Yudhishthira, capture him. You know why? Afterwards, the Durjodhanas at the back of his mind, and he said to the Karna and others, I will again ask him to play that dies and again <laughs> I will defeat with the help of the Shakuni and again I will send him to that the uh, in the jungle for another 12 or 14 years and so that will be free so I am not going to fight this is the it will be difficult because when the Bhishma fell he understood it will be difficult that time he understood so he came and told him Please do something so that you can capture Yudhishthira. Somehow, you know, in both the camps, people are there to exchange the information as is going on over here too. So <laughs> every day morning the open <laughs> the news is only one. So same thing <laughs> Same thing happened. All information reached to the Arjuna and others. Arjuna promised to protect that Yudhishthira. Arjuna was protecting Yudhishthira, even the Dronacharya could not do anything. Not only that, Drona was defeated by Arjuna's son, Abhimunna also. The Abhimunna was also a great warrior. And this is Dronacharya who asked that uh, uh, our Duryodhan, you have to break the bow from behind. From the front, you cannot. Of the Abhimunna. Abhimunna was a very young boy. He was in teen when he was fighting. 
and these people could not fight facing him and as a Kshatriya do you are supposed to fight face to face not from the back and this Dronacharya the great warrior he said you should do from the back and Mahabharata recorded as long as Vishma was there he maintained all the norms and rules of the war when the Dronacharya came he broke those though he was a Brahmana though he was a great warrior and Dronacharya told when all people are tired go and kill them even in the night in all these days in the Indian soldiers the warriors they never fought in the night because you cannot give the proper chance to your uh, the opponent you have to give the proper chance to your opponent so that he can protect or fight Dronacharya introduced to fight in the night and secret to kill the same way our Kripacharya the Kripacharya also though he was a, I'm just and this at a time I'm telling Kripa also he used to tell good words he used to tell all the time that Dhritarashtra do not behave in this way give something give them that but at the same time he said go and kill them when they are sleeping that was Kripa so we find that the weaknesses are there in a great character also the perfection just now before coming over here I am late because of that telephone someone called me and he was going telling that this has happened that had happened I don't see <laughs> <laughs> so don't take it so seriously anyone even a perfect person is having some weaknesses it, it may be there so don't think in that way one of our Swami he is very good in other ways but in the dining table or the, or the, or the food that when you are going for lunch or dinner he will say you sit in that chair in that chair that is his speciality <laughs> <laughs> some people they think why you are behaving like that I can go and sit anywhere but now Swami won't allow he will first go I the, he invited me there I went and sat in a chair. I thought this is the chair I should sit. He came and told, did I tell you to sit over here? <laughs> <laughs> if you feel angry, then different. So that is the only character that he is having to tell in that way. And he takes great you know, joy in telling people, okay, you Aja, go and sit in that. Aja, you come sit over here. That is the joy. So that, that is his weakness. And that if you accept, otherwise he is a very good man. Sometimes some people are there, some Swamis are there who will be joking and some people are there, if you joke, he's angry. So, <laughs> he can't understand. So, the different type of characters are there. Here in Dronacharya, so many good qualities were there. But at the same time, he was very weak for his son and also for Arjuna. But when he was fighting, he understood that I won't be able to win and I am going to be defeated by in the hand of Arjuna. He himself blessed Arjuna. At the same time, we find when all these things are there at this, when Yudhishthira goes to him and says, Acharya, you are killing so many people. How to stop you? Then he told, do something so that I give up the, my weapon. As long as the weapon in my hand, you cannot defeat. No one can, not only you. So no one can do. But he was defeated temporarily, of course by Arjuna, by Arjuna's son, so this character and he was un unhesitatingly he said this is the way you have to do then when Yudhishthira came back and said that this is the way he said immediately Krishna planned <laughs> and when Krishna planned that Arjuna and Yudhishthira didn't support that that you have to kill something and in the name of Ashwatthama and Yudhishthira should go and announce then only he will understand and moment he will hear that his son is dead he will never fight Krishna could understand that Arjuna told no I am not going to do this type of work Yudhishthira was also hesitating no I won't do Bhima told no so many people thousands of our best people are dying in his hand we have to stop him anyway so he went and in in there there's a 
uh, the elephant was there, his name was also Ashwatthama, he went and killed that. And he said, Ashwatthama is Atta, Ashwatthama is Atta. He, he went and he was shouting before him. He stopped, he listened, but he didn't believe the Bhima. He said, no, <laughs> Bhima I cannot believe. Then the Krishna asked the Yudhishthira to go and tell it. Now the question again, this, this is, these are the things that you must learn. For the betterment of many, if you take a wrong thing, that is also Dharma. And that was taught by Krishna. Not that every time you should do that. When it is an emergency that you cannot, so you can go and do that. Giving bribe is a very bad thing, right? But at the same time, our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's disciple, to save the life, he gave bribe to the girl, the jail girl. Chaitanya appreciated that. It's okay. To save the, because he was a great person. Only because of that, if some you know, ruthless people, if they kill him, it is better to come out of that and then he can give much better ideas and the life to, for the society, service to the society. So if you take that wrong, apparently wrong step that very moment. So this is the teaching that Krishna is telling to Arjuna, uh, Yudhishthira, nothing wrong is going to happen. Even then Yudhishthira told, he shouted, Vashottama Hatha Iti Kunjara that the cringers there slowly. So they always say that is the only black spot in the life of. It's not a black spot. Our God himself, the Krishna himself is telling because to save thousands of people, this man should die. So Dronacharya and obviously he was killed and ultimately when they all went, then Dronacharya said to the Yudhishthira, see, Arthasya Purusho Dasha, Klebabat Bakyam Brabimi Kurunandana. I am telling you, this, uh, the Bhishma Parma is telling, I am the slave of money. Had I lived just as a Brahmana, I could have heard that. But as because I have to, because I have accepted the job and I am supposed to, so just because of that money, and the critics of the Dronacharya, they say, he never wanted so much of money because he was having only one son and their wife. So why he was having so much, it was not necessary, he could do. But whatever it may be, he is accepting the, when the Yudhishthira went and he said, please bless me so that I become the winner. I can win this. Then he said, I cannot because I am the slave now. I cannot bless you. What type of slave? Because I work under him. Arthasya purusho dasha. All the purusha, the human being, because of the money, they become the slaves. And that's why I cannot say like that. So slow ekadasha, that is in 11th day, he became the senapati and he was going on and he said, Drishta Drumna, he announced, Drishta Drumna is born to kill me. That also he told and to Yudhishthira, Drishta Drumna, I am not going to kill Drishta Drumna because he is the only person who can kill me. So when he was telling this, we can feel that he wanted to die because he was disgusted with all these things. Within him there was a Rishi. Within him there was a so nice, uh, righteous person. But at the same time, because of the situation, he was compelling to do this. So obviously the torment that was going on within his mind, he, he understood that I, no one can kill me because if I'm having the, my bow and arrow or any weapon, no one can kill me. But at the same time, he told this Drishta Drumna, he is born to kill me. When I am giving up my all other things, ask him to come and kill me. When Bhima told, and then the Yudhishthira announced, then he left, now the last portion, this is so wonderful. After the five days, 
when he heard that his son is dead wrongly he, he had no time to examine whether it is not. when particularly Yudhishthira said he accepted it and he sat just like a yogi he concentrated his mind he left all attachment and he left his body few people Yudhishthira Sanjaya and other two I think Arjuna and Krishna these four people they saw his Atman going and marching with the Brahman so he was a great personality he used to practice that yoga all through his life so apparently when you see something in a man and then we conclude and then uh, we uh, comment over that is wrong so ultimately when you see look at this he died in such a way and his soul merged with the Brahman that means so highest form of the yogi he was and sitting over there on the chariot leaving his arms Drishtadumna went when he is already <laughs> dead it was not necessary for him Drishtadumna went he had some revenges he went and killed him and then uh, not only that he hold his the, uh, the hair and cut his head and that was he was showing each and every one criticized Drishtadumna because of that you should not have touched the head of the guru so that was the teaching afterwards we find and someone is telling that he was having his hair up to the shoulder and all gray a golden color hair up to the shoulder though he was almost like 80 above 80 or something his age but when he was fighting he was just like a 16 years young with all the strength so that was the drona but when we find this the Yamadagni, Vishamitra, Gautama, Bharadwaja, they all came and told don't kill people in this way because he was applying the wrong methods. He was killing the ordinary soldiers with his own and he was not supposed to kill in that way. So they came and told you should not do it. Then he killed Abhum, Abhimunna also from the back and then ultimately this thing happened he was applying Dhruvasti Vijayo Rajan he said that to Yudhishthira Dharmaraj Dhruvasti Vijayo Rajan that you will be successful and he called him as a Raja Rajan as because you are holding the truth so this is the character of and we say almost like the same the Kripa Acharya he was very quiet type of person and he used to constantly tell that you should go and accept Krishna because Krishna is the God Kripacharya he told so in this Kripacharya and uh, when he saw that the Droni the Drona Dr Ashatthama he became very angry and then uh, everything is lost now and in one corner that uh, our Durjodhana he was lying and waiting for the death then he was thinking something should be done he went to our Durjodhana the what you want as be before the death then Durjodhana at even at that time he told if I if you can bring the information the news of the death of the Pandavas or someone from them I'll be very happy so the son of the Drona the Droni the Ashrattama he wanted to do something at that moment he was consulting with three and one is Kripacharya so when he was consulting with Kripacharya he was telling that in the night I will go and kill the five sons of Kunti so I cannot go and fight the Arjuna and others but at least the children I can go and kill and that will give them lot of tormentation that I can go and inform my friend over there so when he was trying to do that that time the wonderful advice the Kripacharya gave to him Kurume Bachanam Tata Ena Paschanna Tapsya Se Se the, listen to me Tata oh my son listen to me 
do not do something for which you have to repent afterwards. That was the great advice. Do not ever do anything for which you have to repent afterwards. Anger you must control. Na badha pujyate loke suptan mi dharmataha. So when our, we find that the Dronacharya, he introduced this all this type of thing, but the Kripacharya is telling never ever do like that. Na badha pujyate loke when they are that type of people, even their children, you can go and then you can fight with them, kill them. But when they are sleeping, that time you should not do because that is not the dharma. Then ultimately, uh, when in the night that uh, Ashwatthama attacked that, uh, the, what's called their, uh, the camp, Many people in the dark night wanted to save their life not knowing what is happening because the war was over. Naturally, they were not prepared in that way. When they were trying to save themselves, again, Kripacharya, he was killing them, which he was not supposed to. So the, the biographer, he is mentioning it is unthinkable how this such a nice person, how could he again behave like this? This commitment to Duryodhana and all these things we can understand. But at the same time, why in the wrong way? And that is the reason the Krishna told all these people that you see in the beginning, when the Bhagavad Gita, were, then when Krishna was telling all these people that you see, maybe the Bhishma, the Kripacharya, Dronacharya, actually they are dead why within their krishna god himself and he understood that within their heart they were not holding the truth they were telling nicely sri ramakrishna that's why he said you should judge a man by observing him 24 hours when he says something and he apparently is nice and all don't accept him in you must see the, his other behaviors also. And in his own way, he said, Shadhu ke dine dekbi. You must observe a, a respected person in the daytime. Rate dekbi. Again, in the night time, that means 24 hours, you should observe a person. And then only you can understand. When you were observing these personalities, they were so great. But at the same time, so heinous work that he was doing doing and that was not necessary he himself advised ashwatthama not to do that but again he was doing then afterwards but even then this kripacharya who was considered as kripacharya never died even then this kripacharya when he was 115 years old then the yudhishthira after all these things was over, he accepted Kripacharya as his minister. Look at the Yudhishthira. Because the Kripacharya was having that quality, good quality, and the capacity also. So Yudhishthira, considering all these things, he didn't punish him, rather accepted him as one of the minister. And not only that, Parikshit, you know, the Parikshit is their son, Arjuna's son, then he gave Parikshit to under the care of uh, this Kripacharya. You must teach him as you taught us. So this is the Kripacharya. And then we go to the Sanjaya. His life, they were Brahmana. Sanjaya was the son of a very low caste. And this Sanjaya, though he was low caste, he behaved like a Brahmana. Though these two people, they were born in, as a Brahmana, but behaved like a Kshatriya and sometimes not even Kshatriyas. They went much below only to achieve something because of the anger, because of the frustration. They could not keep the balance of the Dharma. But Sanjaya, he did really wonderfully. But only in one case we find Sanjaya, he is consulting with the Karna and others, Karna, Durjodhana, and inspiring Karna 
to kill secretly applying his god given that uh, uh, the power either arjuna or krishna sanjaya so so in the war that makes a man brute that's why again we have to understand that they were really good people but the war that time it is really impossible when the hindu muslim riot broke out in calcutta just before the independence i heard it we were not born at that time i heard a person who was very famous in the locality he was very quiet type of person all the time he used to study the gita bhagavata so locality people used to respect him even he when he saw an elderly muslim is going you know what he did after we really heard the head threat so much of head threat and then the wrong way the propaganda oh these people are killing our girls and then doing these and mostly wrong things he also inside he was reading bhagavata then also and it was a hindu community area he was sitting on the baranda as usual he was reading that bhagavata quietly suddenly he saw that muslim he is going he went and pushed him into the ditch to kill him the war makes a man brute and that is the reason when we are studying these the mahabharata the great personalities even the sanjaya he took 400 specially trained soldiers and fought fought against the pandavas and did a great damage that means when thousands and millions soldiers were there what 400 soldiers were doing they were actually commando type of people and sanjay also knew and secretly they were going and attacking and damaging the pandava camps this sanjay and this sanjay was given a special blessings by byasha so he could see everything he could hear everything that particular time and byasha told nobody will kill you and after that when the krishna's son i think he came and arrested him he wanted to kill him byasha told no you cannot kill him i gave him that assurance don't kill he was somehow survived this sanjay otherwise he was really a very good man so when i was reading his life i was thinking why this you know the uh, this is the sanjaya who gave all secret messages to the duryodhana and when duryodhana was also there without any help it is sanjaya who came and told drona i mean uh, ashwatthama droni and others that he is there so sanjay also he was going on doing like this but at the same time this sanjay he told who was inspiring karna to go and kill krishna he said to Dur the dhritarashtra when dhritarashtra wanted to know from him you are a respected person you can see the future and the past can you please tell me how to win this war then he told i won't tell you just to you if you bring the vyasa and and your wife uh, then only i will tell you then uh, gandhari and vyasa came <coughs> then he told you know you will be defeated why because of the krishna and you know why krishna is not an ordinary person krishna is god himself this is sanjay the sanjay told the krishna is the god and wherever there is krishna there is success wherever there is krishna there is satya and dharma because that thing was there at the same time how come he was behaving like this so my conclusion is war makes each and every one brute because there is no other way so sanjaya he uh, used to inspire people at the same time the when yudhishthira got that uh, became the king he made sanjaya uh, his uh, treasurer <laughs> yudhishthira character is a really unique so yudhishthira he was not having any vengeance so many things happened 
But at the same time, when you we were fighting, we were all enemies, okay. When all these things are over, then I have to choose my men seeing their capacities, quality. That is the teaching. Whenever a new leader is coming, immediately he is removing all the old people, even though they are good people, capable people, wrong thing. As a bet, at best administrator is he who can really understand who will be successful. You see, if you are comparing with the present day society, and same thing. So Yudhishthira, he was that way, perfect. His name was Sthira, and really he is a Sthira. And when we, we find over here that, uh, that uh, uh, he made him that you must be my treasure, treasurer, and he gave him a lot of respect. Not only that, when the Brahmanas came, he, Yudhishthira, asked the Sanjaya, to give all the gift, whatever gift you like, you give. So much of faith in Sanjaya. And Sanjaya was, uh, when he took that Banaprasthi, his age was 100. So that also showed that they were living for a long time. But what are the things that they are eating that it, no record is there? <laughs> See, Vedabhyasa, he must be very, very old, but I don't know exactly. In, in this type of Vedabhyasa, afterwards maybe I will just inquire, I will see. He also lived for a long, long time. But main thing, they were yogis. So they could control their, this mind. And not only the food, but the other all options are also there. So these people, they were really wonderfully. So, so that Sanjaya and this two great Acharyas, Dronacharya and Kripacharya, they are descendants of the Rishis. And Sanjaya was the son of a chariot uh, driver. So they, in those days, though they were considered as a low caste, but when you are having the quality, society accepted you. That also we should learn in the, this Mahabharata age, when the Sanjaya, though he was born in that way, but because of his qualities, he was accepted by, and now we are discussing about this king, Duryodhana, Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was a supreme king, very powerful. And that is the reason when the, this war broke out, so all these kings they came, Suppose that Dhritarashtra was a small king, who would have come? No, he was a very... And now that Dhritarashtra, he is appointing the Sanjaya as his minister. And when he is a minister, he used to tell rough words you know, very strongly to the king also. And you have not accepted this, so you are going to win not only yourself, but the whole, that way he used to speak. So the, he was highly accepted. So in that our you know, society, this is really wonderful. If you have good qualities, whether you are a low caste or a high caste, it doesn't matter. Karno used to provoke because Karno was constantly, people used to tell him that you are also a low caste, that, that when a, a pinching was always there, so he used to return back in that way. Karna's life was like that. Karna Kunti Sambhada, that's it, wonderful in the Mahabharata. He knew, Mother, I knew everything. But now that I have accepted these, now I am a Radha Putra. Now there is no other way. I must have to behave like this. So when, again, if you go and you see so many good qualities in Karna too. When the Krishna came and told, give me that Kabaja Kundala, that was the main protection of the Karna. He knew that it is Krishna. Even then he told, as I have promised, that whoever come in the morning, whatever they will ask, I will give. I am giving it to you. Indra, Indra. The Indra that the, the Krishna is organizing. He knew that. So that way, the Krishna is organizing, taking the life. But they were so brave. They knew. 
So the wonderful characters in the Mahabharata and in the next again we will study. But I think next, uh, what was there in the next? That this is June. Huh? Yeah? No. Maybe that we will study uh, the two queens as we are, then afterwards we'll go to the others. That is really a things to ponder, this weakness is until and unless you are established in Brahman, you are not beyond this. And that is why Ma Saradamani Devi said, as long as you can call yourself a monk, when you are, your body, dead body is burned and become ashes, then only it is proved that you are a true monk. That means you are ultimately up to the death, you could continue with your ideology. There is no sudden, sorry, there is suddenly there may be some opportunity and you break all your things. Things may happen like that. So purification of mind, Shishta Shuddhi, which is a main and prerequisite for advancement spiritually. So in spite of all that, and that is the reason they say when you are in the samsara is really very difficult because in the samsara the commitment dronacharya if he was a brahmana then there is no problem for him only thing he had to leave that when a poverty has taken life the moment he wanted to take the revenge he took the promise from his children students, particularly Arjuna, he promised, I will do that. What is that? As a Guru Dakshina, you have to defeat uh, that, Dro uh, uh, what is that? Uh, that his friend, uh, Drupada, and you have to bring him to me. And when the Arjuna did, and he told Drupada, I am not going to kill you. Only you promise that half of the kingdom you will give me, I am taking the half of the kingdom. And the other half is yours. So, but afterwards, he, not that he ruled that kingdom, but just to keep that promise. Why? Because he was in the samsara. So that is why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling, as long as you are in the samsara, there is great chances that a black shoot may uh, come to you. So that's why we see in all this character. Krishna is completely free from that because he is the God himself. He is, mm -hmm. and he is doing everything, but at the same time not attached to it anything. But as today, the great personalities that we studied, that the Kripacharya, Dronacharya, and Sanjaya, and the Sanjaya Uvacha in the Bhagavad Gita, every time we are studying, but at the same time, something wrong is there. See, the prophet, the, inc uh, the messenger of God, we call Mahapurusha. In our tradition, you will never find that someone has been marked as the messenger of God. We call them Mahapurusha. The Mahapurusha means they live in their own life, the, all the high moral values, etc. they practice, and they inspire people that much. But the incarnation of God the God is coming maybe in a part or whatever uh, the power that he is coming with ac according to the necessity to guide people and that is his own motto only to 
guide people, to direct people for the religious life, to develop their spiritual life. His only mission is to do that. But the Mahapurusha is not that. Mahapurusha is living his life and at the same time, through his life, whatever good work that is possible, that much. It is not his life's mission to inspire people and guide. But the Avatara, his life's mission is to establish Dharma. That uh, Krishna is telling, why I am taking this human form? To establish Dharma. That is the, that is the main thing. Ishar Koti, again, almost, sorry, almost like the Mahapurushas, they are, the Ishar Kotis are, previous life, they have done all these things, they are not supposed to come, but they have come at the behest of the God to show that it is possible. Suppose only Krishna and there is no other. The people who say, oh, God came and did like that. Only Jesus, because of the God's son, so naturally like that. But when we see so many people all around, they are also exalted life, high spiritual life that they are living. Then the naturally faith comes and the hope also comes. Oh, I can also be like that. So that is called Ishar Koti. Only Avatara could understand that they are Ishar Koti. Otherwise, apparently just like normal people. So that is Ishar. That is all you know, that. Uh, whatever we do in this life, that takes us to them. You mean a realized master? Okay. Realized yeah, Ishwar Kati. Not only this life they have realized, they realized in the past even. Yeah. And they have come to support uh, the work. So, hmm, so this way we have to understand. Don't you think some of the teachers of Dronacharya and Shilpa, who was their guru? The Dronacharya. You know that here when we, uh, we studied that his father himself, Bharadwaja, Bharadwaja himself. Mm. And that the Agnivesh, uh, the Agnivesh was also the great teacher. Agnivesh has a school. Bharadwaja Muni knew that, but he never had the school to teach the martial or the military art. But the Agnivesh, he was also See, the Brahmanas doesn't mean only practicing spirituality. Brahmanas means those who are utilizing their capacity for the, the researches and the development of many things. Some people, they went for the medicine. Some people went for agricultural development. Some people went for developing this martial and the military art. That was also necessary. So that is the wonderful way that they were thinking, unless and until you are having the military art, you won't be able to protect you. Not that you have to go and kill someone, but only for the protection also it is necessary. The human society, so obviously, so those who were Brahmanas, but concentrating to develop this military art, they were also like that. So that's why they say that Ardharatha, Ratha, Maharatha, so different type of, uh, so what's called, that's called, um, um, the certificates they used to get. Person who could fight more than 10,000 is Maharatha. 10,000 people, you have, can you imagine? That means that type of capacity they were having. And I was telling, I don't know where, uh, the now that, Mahabali, that ne, Mahabali, <laughs> Mahabali, that movie has come. How a person he is fighting with so many? No, Bahubali, sorry, not Ma. That's Bahubali. See so that with me, they were also making the mistake. That means huh? <laughs> you were also not observing the movies. <laughs> Uh, no. uh, that is, see, uh, it is the, uh, we, just this moment we cannot say right or wrong, 
but it is an example. It is an example of a disciple. He is ready to do anything that the Guru says. Now, Ekalabha, if he refused to do that, maybe he would have become a great warrior. Maybe that he could come and join in the, uh, the to Mahabharata war and then against uh, fighting against Arjuna and Krishna. And so many great warriors came against Arjuna and Krishna. They all they died. Uh, the Ekalabha also one of them, it may be that. Now because Ekalabha did that sacrifice, each and every one is uh, supporting Ekalabha than his guru. So that's why Swami Vivekananda said that unselfishness is more pain, but we don't have the patience to practice it. <laughs> Ekalabha, he knew that I'm going to lose all my capacity, but at the same time, this. So about this Ekalabha, there's a funny story, you know? There's a, suddenly that uh, Mandala Commission, something in our country, so those who are only low caste, they will get the best seat and all. Ekalabhya came to the Guru and said, I like to learn. The Guru said, you are not a Brahmana, you are not a Kshatriya, so I cannot teach you. So Ekalabhya said, okay, I will go and sit in meditation, I will do the tapasya. Some In some life, I will become a Brahmana and come to you, okay? The Guru said, all right. Then long, long afterward, in the modern day, in Indian University, the Guru, he became the the vice chancellor and Ekalabhya came and told, Sir, can you recognize me? I am that Ekalabhya. Now I am in a Brahmin family. Again, you have made the mistake. This yeah. time, <laughs> 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 this time here in India, if you are in a low caste, you will get a reserve seat. Otherwise, you won't. <laughs> so, all funny things. Huh? That, that is also there, but the thing is, this is a one-one character that you yeah. find. The Ekalabha's character was, see, he never learned anything from the Guru. He could simply say that, you are not my Guru, I am only, you, have you, it is not like that, we, nowadays, we are uh, getting the books, uh, uh, etc., and then with the help of that book we are learning, yeah. not like that. Simply keeping the image of Guru, considering that he is teaching me, all my inner strength came out. Even then, as because mentally I have accepted you as my Guru, uh, like that. So that, that type of mental strength was also there. So I think now it's all right. And, you know? Okay. So later I, I will just say one thing. See, uh, every three months we publish a, a magazine that is called Easy in Chicago Calling. And this uh, magazine also we bring some of this art copies so that people, uh, particularly uh, the little, you know, the senior citizens, they prefer to read than to go to the, uh, the so this is only three dollar and is having three nice articles, editorial and other inspiring things. Arise, awaken, stop not that I always give in this. An introduction to the cover page, which is also wonderfully written. So you can just, a few copies are there, you can just see. It's called Chicago Calling. And you please go to our website and visit this, um, our easy in also. So let us say, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Shanti Hi Hari Hi Whatever it may be, we are going to follow only this person. Krishna.